remember when I first started warning people about the microchip implant, I was passing out flyers downtown, and one couple said, I can't wait until we do get a microchip implant. It was a few years ago, and I was actually caught off guard by that statement. She said, yeah, it's going to be so much easier for my banking statements and my paychecks and to pay bills. Well, as you know now, there's so many applications for the microchip, it's stunning. What I'm going to show you next is just unbelievable, outstanding. In the very near future, there's going to be so many positive reasons why you should get a microchip implant that those of us who refuse to get a microchip implant will be the absolute outcasts of society. Yep, sooner or later, those of us who believe in scripture are going to be identified as terrorists. What if you could not only do your banking, keep track of your children, open, lock, and start your car, communicate with your phone, your iPad, your computer, travel through airports, train stations, and bus stations, shop online, buy groceries, buy anything pertaining to merchandise, go to football games, basketball games, any entertainment or sports industry, be a part of a health club, and of course, travel anywhere in the world that you desire. But without the microchip implant, you won't be able to do anything at all. I ask you again, will you then get your microchip if it comes down to all that? Will you get, will you get, will you get your microchip if it comes down to all that? The technology that we're talking about is called radio frequency identification. This is a standard technology that's been in use for several years now in corporate or office kind of environments. And what we're doing is we're applying it to an automotive environment. Traditionally, it's used as an unlocking device, so you can access a door or, or whatnot in an office. We're using it for that purpose as an unlocking device, but we're also using it to start the vehicle. So by doing this, what we can do is we start the vehicle, it unlocks the door so I can enter the vehicle. I can at that point close the door, put it in gear, and drive away. Right now, I have an RFID chip surgically implanted in my left hand. It allows me to do all the same functions that the car does, but with my hand. So what you're telling me is, you just started your car, not only without a key, but you started it with your bare hand. Yeah. You started it with your bare hand. Yeah, yeah. Check outlines. Who needs them? Have a nice day. This is the future of e-business. To think something so small can connect you to everything that matters. When your life and all you love are on the line. Healthlink is always with you. When every second counts in the emergency room, providing immediate access to your medical records. Because Bob has trouble remembering all his medications. Because I'm in love with my kids' kids. Because my car lost control while driving. Because now, I'm looking out for both of us. Because I have diabetes, but it doesn't have me. Because I spend my life in the ER trying to save yours.
Welcome to the future, specifically the checkpoint of the future will become commonplace around the world, a sort of one-stop shop for security from the curb to the gate, as they say, with dignity. So how does it work? Let's now ask Ken Dunlap. Hello Ken. Welcome. Thank you very much. You're Head of Security at IATA. Walk us through this. I want to show you the revolution. Okay. The first thing you need to do is identify yourself to our system. Passport. Passport. In here. It says it's normal. I'm a normal person. And that's the result of passenger pre-screening that's been done by your government. And it's also the result of a known traveler program that your government may choose to implement within it. And we have a smart system. Through the normal channel. Okay. What do I do now? And we're asking you to identify yourself one last time so you don't sneak into the tunnel you don't belong into. Passport in there. Iris scan. This says everything's okay. This I'm still I'm still good. You're fine and you're clear to walk through the tunnel and receive your security scanning. So walking through the tunnel, security scanning, I've got x-ray, metal detector, liquid detector, shoe scanner, and explosive trace. You're not gonna have a security screener meet you and start patting down your person and perhaps violating your privacy or doing something that you would prefer not to have. Okay, so let's assume I've gone through everything there clean. I can now board my flight, is that right? You can board your flight. We want you to keep your stride. We don't want you to stop. And in fact, we don't even want you to know that you're being security screened. Sounds fantastic, obviously. How realistic is it? When can we see anything like this? Well, this is science fact and it's not science fiction. So there you have it, basically a system which, if IATA has it right, will mean that passengers go from the curb to the gate in their language, with dignity, without having to stop, without having to unpack, without having to strip, without having to be worried about being broke. All right, check out this bus here. It's a new prototype. I believe this is in Paris. You can tell by the language on it. And I want you to read carefully what this says up here. Entry for travel, I believe that's what that says. It says prototype, perception, électronique, entrez, voyeur. I believe that's French. Um, this is a prototype bus for uh, scanning or biometrics for entering into the bus and using the bus. So this is coming, this is happening very quick. Check out this other bus. You know what I heard? I heard that they're putting the microchip in people next year. Oh, the arm? And that's what this is for. Oh, the arm. That's what I heard. It's almost like the 666, 666, 666. Uh-huh. This is put out by U.S. Customs and Border Protection and regulated by the WHTI, the Western Hemisphere Travel Initiative. It's going to show you how to use your RFID for traveling, especially across borders, making it very convenient for you. Okay, first, you have to stop at the beginning of the lane. This is almost comical. It's so simple. I'm just explaining to you the simple steps of what will eventually turn out to be scanning your hand as you cross the border. Second thing you do is pull out your required documents and what they mean by that is everybody get ready to scan your hand. You got your scanner? You got your scanner. Okay, let's smile. And then you wait for an indication to proceed forward. Either there'll be a green light or a wonderful one world government police official to signal you forward. And you hold up your documents as you glide through the scanner with the outer part of the scan facing outward so that the RFID reader device can easily read the chip. And you're ready to pass the border and you've processed just fine and your microchip has turned out to be a valuable instrument. Depending on how well that went, you may have to stop at a final booth, but typically in this new wonderful world of technology, everything should be splendid and fabulous for your travels. This can be a scary sight for students who don't know where to go or what to do. 
Ella Macri is one of those students. She was really scared about missing the bus because she's in grade one and this is her first time having to catch the bus by herself. Now, a little extra security. Students in Elk Island Public Schools are swiping smart cards, swiping smart cards, swiping smart cards when they get on and off the bus. The buses themselves have GPS trackers. This technology would enhance student safety to see that the students get on the bus. The GPS, we can watch the buses travel. We can ensure that they, if there's a breakdown or a potential, um, that we can see that they're safe and that the students are traveling. No more waiting in the cold for late buses either. Parents can log in from smartphones or a home computer and find out their child's ETA. Those behind the wheel say the quarter million dollar investment is worth it. Yvette Foster says the changes will lessen the chance of children missing their stops or getting left behind. It does happen and that would be an extra check for all the drivers and for sure. An added security that isn't lost on the children themselves. One small swipe for the Macri's, one giant leap for peace of mind. What do you think? Are you going to get your microchip to fit in society, to function, to buy clothes, to take care of your kids, to start your car, to be cool? I'm telling you right now, if you take that mark, if you take that microchip, you're doomed. You're doomed. You're doomed. Scripture says whoever takes that mark, they're going to control your mind with this thing. You will not be able to make a good, sound, spiritual decision anymore in your life. I've been warning you and warning you and warning you and it's coming to pass. Some of these people think it's a great idea. Give your life to Jesus right now. Call upon him and his blood to wash you clean of all your sins. Ask him to teach you how to follow him and indwell his spirit inside you. Be born again. Live for the kingdom and you won't have to worry about dying in your sins, being judged and going to hell. We're running out of time. Make your decision. Make your decision.